Good day, Effie. How are you this morning? Oh, probably afternoon for you or late evening. Jay, I'll be back in a minute. He's just gone inside to get something. How you going, Bob? Good day, Bob. Yeah, I can't hear you, but I'll get that fixed. I just reloaded my tablet, did a software update, and not everything is working. Mm -hmm. All these old permissions that I've got to have. We're in uh, stage five now. You are? Yep. Yeah, I know. My friends from Murray Bridge are whinging like bugger, and they're not allowed more than two and a half kilometres from anywhere. Oh, well, shit happens. Can't do nothing about it, so why, why bother whinging about it, you know? Yeah, exactly. Oh, they're, they're three kilometres from Murray Bridge. Oh, that's why they're whinging. Oh, all right. Fair call then. <laughs> okay. Can you guys hear me now? Yeah, that's better. Yeah. We could, okay. yep, we could hear you before, though, to be yeah, fair. Yeah, well, I couldn't soft. hear myself. I just, there are so many permissions that you've got to do when you set up Chrome. Yeah, yep. I'm not used to it. I haven't, I haven't tweaked with Chrome's permissions in probably three, four years. So, did you? It's, I got it. Did you get your other laptop back? I mean, your tablet rather. Yep. Yep. Cool. That's that what I'm cool? using. Okay. And okay. it was a software update gone wrong. Okay. Because it saw Chrome installed, and Amazon has their own browser, but it's not compatible with StreamYard. Oh. <laughs> so it's not as flexible. And it takes up less memory, and that's what they want, because, you know, it's for browsing. It's not designed for two-way communication where Chrome is. Yep. And multi. And each time you open uh, a session of it, you can have a totally separate microphone and speaker tied to each one and yep. different sound coming in. That's how you can play background music if you want on it. You can actually have it running and then you pick it like you would a you, for at your end, you pick it as a user. And you click it on, but there's no picture. It's just your opening jingle or picture to start the show with music. And, yep. You know. Yeah, good day, Effie. I, they use Chrome. Good day, Effie. I did say good day before, but you weren't there, so. How you going, Effie? So I'm just um, I'm just sorting through some crayons. Oh, yeah. So I've got, uh, I'm trying to pick out ones that have got at least three. <laughs> Not much luck, but. So I've got, I've got that colour and that colour. Mm -hmm. I reckon this one will look better with the vine. 
You need a name tag on, do you, Effie? <laughs> Please send me back here. <laughs> Hmm. It's like what I put on the front of front of all my books and things. I've been stolen from Cobb and Co. Wood Tourney. <laughs> oh, what? I was going to ask ask if you had any books lying around that you didn't read anymore. I'm not going to bother now. <laughs> <laughs> if it wasn't so expensive to ship them, I'd ship you a big crate. I have been asked to review books for years and years, so I get these review copies. And I probably have a library of 100, 120 books all on woodworking. Not no. necessarily all wood turning, but woodworking and that. Look at this ugly piece. Oh, I think it's gorgeous. It's a, got a really big, really big base on it, and it narrows down quite quickly. So. But it's actually it almost, got the least, it's got the least it crack in it, and it got that little bit. It has a there. feminine shape to it, too. Oh, I was thinking if more of a... stand it on edge. I was I mean, thinking more, bark, more, of a, uh, more of an elephant's foot. <laughs> yeah, if you think of it that way, I was thinking of the curve there being the... Oh, their bum up to their back? <laughs> yeah. And then I'll cut, that, I'll cut this piece up into three pieces, and I've got this little piece here as well. It might end up being a lid for this, but I don't, I don't, don't even know what I'm going to be doing, to be honest. I just want to turn it down. We already know it's pretty pretty stable, uh, even with that big split in it. Effie, I can't work out what you're getting at there. I will see if they could see me to Jay. Do, do you want to come into the, um, the speaking part of the chat, Effie, instead of typing? Want me to pull a link in for her? I've just done it. Oh, okay. <laughs> you know, it was it was bloody hot today. <laughs> I picked up the term. Yeah, you don't know what bloody hot is. <laughs> well, it was a hundred and in my shop when I finally figured out that the reason I'm having trouble sitting on a stool uh, doing some detail work is that I was totally <coughs> hot and probably dehydrated at the same time. Yep. Yeah, that doesn't uh, help. Do you drink um, hydrolytes or something in equivalent to? No, just water with uh, a little bit of flavoring in it occasionally. Uh, look, honestly, I really recommend you try the hydrolytes out. Um, we get the tablet ones. The, the tablet ones seem to work the best. I would recommend them to anyone that's getting dehydrated from just drinking water. It is excellent. It's got the hydrolytes you need in it. Um, off, is it off the, off the counter or prescription? Yeah. No, nah, off the over, counter. Over the counter, yeah. Yeah, yeah it should be either being – you can. we get it in the grocery stores here or in the chemist. Yeah. So. Now, it, now I see what you're getting at, Effie. Send me to Jay when I get lost. All right. <laughs> I'm not that far away from Robbo, to be honest, on the scheme of things. And if you get lost in between mine and Robbo's, you'll get sent to SIDS. Because that's about where you'll be. Oh, that's a long way round. That's what I mean, if she gets lost. Yeah. Yeah, I just put it in my uh, phone on our the VA medical site, and it came up and asked me if I wanted to order some. So I picked a bottle. They have it as pills or as a liquid you can use for flavoring drinks. Yep, just watch out with the liquid because sometimes it's not as strong as what the tablets are. The tablets are a much better strength. And if he's putting Gatorade. No. Yeah, no. that's another one, but they're expensive. No. Yeah, that's more of a sports drink, though. 
Yeah. yeah, and they've got sugar, and I, being diabetic, yeah. I've got to watch my sugar. No, nah, hydrolytes all the way, as far as I'm concerned, when it comes to rehydrating yourself. Well, I just ordered a bottle of 200. Yep. And it says I will have them. I'll try. By if, Saturday. Gonna, try Also try the tablets too after you've tried the liquid just to see the difference uh, you don't i mean if the liquid works for you cool but no, just, got, these are tablets yeah yeah it just makes a big difference um and the recommended dose of those is about um five tablets to a liter of water or something like that um so we put about four tablets to a liter of water because it kind of still does the same job really Yep, that's what I got here. It's technically, uh, <laughs> it's made in China, made here in the U.S., but it's a little under a liter. It's got a mark inside, but this, I can put hot coffee in. It's when, when I get up, the coffee turns on automatically, and the yep. pot will fill this, and that's, in the winter, I take that out to the shop, and in the summer, I uh, put about three inches of water in the bottom of it and stick it in the freezer and then in the morning before I go out I put cold water in it and but I've got the ice already in the bottom. Yep. Bugger it, all this talk of water and stuff's made me thirsty, so I'm gonna put it <laughs> <laughs> I just finished my coffee. Can't can't have another one just yet. I think a uh, a new a new a fresh brood of um, baby magpies are in the area. Yeah, it sounds old... like babies. Yeah. They, they do that. <clears throat> they do that a lot on sunny days. Make that have the singing noise like that too. But it's generally um, two of them. One of them will make a kind of a, a nice sound, but two of them make a nice sound together. Yeah. All right. Got your YouTube muted, Bob? Yep. All right. Just making sure. So I've got um, these cracks this time. I want to try and fill them in with a bit of crayon. So I've got got that colour there, red, and I'm going to do and or, not both, blue. And hmm. just to surprise everyone today, I think I'm going to go with the blue. Just the blue and the and the vine wood don't look too bad together. You're going to melt it in. Yeah. Yep. Never done that before. That's nothing new. Should I try it out? I'll get the piece that I did yesterday. I um I melted some plastic down over some diamantes to hold them down a bit. Yeah. Um only because of the I put super glue, too much super glue on them and it put white on them. So I put uh -huh. I put um I melted some um plastic over it yesterday with a heat gun. And then I did the bees, the actually earrings, bee, bee honeycomb earrings that I, I, I put a groove they in. They look like nuts to me. <laughs> I was going to say you can't, you got to watch how you spread your nuts out. <laughs> yeah, and right, we'll get, you, you think it's a double entendre? <laughs> <laughs> There's a couple there. Yeah, we're live, we're live, and I can't say the others. <laughs> well, you're holding your nuts in your hand. Yeah, I am. Well, no, I'm not. It's honeycomb. Come on. <laughs> it is nice, but I mean that for a person who's into metal. Yeah. Uh, Amber that, likes, that's perfect. Yeah, Amber likes the metal over the pink, and and she's a pink girl, so. Uh huh. Yeah. But it was just this was just an experiment piece. I just wanted to just practice with some different 
um, yeah. different things. Because I've well, got you a, could use something like that in your crack. Fill yeah. the bottom in and then put them in so they're at surface level or turn down to them. Yeah, I'll show you the, um, the diamantes that I've got here. They're a bit easy to see when they're not coated in plastic. Uh-huh. <laughs> this is the plastic that I was using. Just... I basically, I basically got it for making molds when I when we were into resin like four or five years yeah. ago, and never used it. So it's perfect for melting into stuff. <laughs> that's like a whistle, then. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's, <laughs> that's my vapor thing, I. <laughs> You vape in the morning? I have to wait um, until night time. Uh, I'm trying to, to try to give up sweat and smoking. Yeah, I smoked in the when I was in, in Nam. A person in my barracks got me hooked on it with some of the local tobacco there. I've been smoking since I was 11, so oh. time to give it up. After 60 years, I think. More like 55 years ago, you, you should have given it up. Bye. Yeah, well, that's right. Bye. I just found it was way too expensive. And to be polite, everybody that's around you smokes, they always ask you for some. So you're always supporting other people. When you got a limited income in college, you can't do that. So what you up to today, Robo? Uh, still working on my granddaughter's bed at the moment. Amongst other things, and working out the live I'm going to do on Sunday night. Have you, do you have a, another microphone close to you, Robert? Because that one just sounds really weird. No, I don't, unfortunately. Why don't I just... Oh, I just thought that maybe StreamYard was using a different... <coughs> no, it sounds good to me. Mm. <laughs> just, there's a lot of background noise today, that's all. Well, like no, just hissing, but like hissing kind of noise, you know? Why don't I just hold on? No, no, not, no, no, it's not your heater. Turn your heater back on. It's not that. It's just a general, the kind of noise that loud speakers have when they're when they're loud, kind of thing. Oh yeah. Oh well, it's got to be at your end. I don't have that. Yeah. How you going, Neil? Good night, as all. <laughs> yeah, all right. <laughs> Good morning, Neil. Morning. Mm. I'm still waking I up. I see why <laughs> your, I see why the common phrase is "good day" because you never know whether it's morning or evening. Uh, it's, just a, <laughs> it's just a general greeting in Australia. Good day. 
so you say good day at night yep yeah. doesn't matter what doesn't matter what time of the day it is Put your bike and die. I don't think he knows yet. We're oh, waiting God. to see what the wood told him. Well, he wants to do some inlay with wax. Yeah, well, I'm going to melt some crayons inside that. Inside that there. But it's, yeah, it's not going to give you any stability with crayons. It's, de it's definitely coming from um, Robbo's end because as soon as he mutes it, that that hissing goes away. Huh. Yeah. I don't know what it is, but I don't either. I don't hear it here. It doesn't bother me per se, but I'm just saying when you when you mute it, it goes away. Same here. So you don't have to. You can leave it unmuted if you want. No, I'll make yeah. you lip read. <laughs> Have you got your heater blowing on in the office? I've got the heater on, but Jay said it wasn't that. No. It sounds, it sounds like the heater at your, your, your feet. It's, and honestly, it just sounds like um, someone's using machinery in the background or you've got yeah. your jet heater going or something really close. No. <laughs> Still there? Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I said, like I said before, it's not your heater. <laughs> it could be something StreamYard is adding upline. I know. Go on Weird. Because <laughs> we're all going as separate entities to their server somewhere yeah. in the cloud that puts the whole program together. <sighs> The one thing I like about the updates that StreamYard have made in their audio is really good. And they got a lot more that they're, they've got a task force on. But uh, the uh, automatic noise suppression software, uh, you have to let it run for about 30 seconds so it can hear the noise and if it's not part of your voice, it cuts it out. Huh. So hums and so, as long as it's constant, if it's a person using a rip saw or a bandsaw, it's not going to get rid of that. Unless the bandsaw is running in the background continuously or for a period of time, it'll recognize that's not a voice and it cuts it out. And that's interesting for us as woodworkers, wood turners, because it'll actually recognize the sound of the lathe and do its best to cut it out. It creates a, an intelligent signal. That's what they call it, it's signal processing. There's yeah, probably more intelligence in the signals than the people sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> No, because sometimes you notice, and I notice it more when Jay leaves his mic on, you'll hear the lathe turn on, and you'll hear him start to turn, and then the sound of the cutting, if it's a long turn, a long cut he's doing, is simply disappeared, because the noise suppression sees that's not a voice, so it cuts it out. The miracle of digital audio processing. It recognizes what you're doing and talking, and it accepts that. And the rest of it, it just throws out. And they have a, a beta or whatever coming up, I understand, where you can actually play with it in, in a control panel to say that that's 
you hear a noise and as you turn the knob you can pick the noise up and say I don't want that one and huh. it won't be there Technically, as an audio person, it creates a notch filter. Let your voice through and filters all the rest out. You're getting good enough, Jay, at that. You don't even need the the calipers anymore you usually hit it right on the nose so that's impressive so what's the temperature like down there in your winter at the moment we're sitting on 10 degrees oh okay I'll just go with the, I live on the tropics, so my, my mind's a little bit warmer, but we've got a oh, shut up, Neil. cold wind today. <laughs> shut up, Neil, we're all right. <laughs> actually, actually, we've got a nice sunny day too today, which is unusual. We had three or four days of rain. Yeah, we're forecast, forecast for uh, three days of sun, but also comes really bitterly cold mornings when there's no cloud cover. <laughs> Some of the places in Victoria down to minus three this morning. Oh, can keep that. <laughs> I, I don't mind the cold as long as I'm warm in bed. <laughs> well, you spend it's enough warm. time in there. <laughs> oh. oh, I do, I do. I can't yeah. complain. That's true. <laughs> you keep your wife nice and happy. Uh, no. Not married. Oh, you so you're you always have a, a available spot next to you to stay warm. <laughs> he keeps his dog uh, happy, not you, Bob. He's hoping he's hoping one day that while he's on trips there'll be a couple of Swedish backpackers that need accommodation, <laughs> you know. That are, that are uh -huh. deaf. Do they have to be deaf? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, the best best chance I had was down near you, Jay. Yeah. It was well. Uh, stand up, buddy. Um, Kingston SE, actually. Uh, they were. Uh, they weren't the your normal young type. They were at least in their thirties. Um, uh, yeah. Heck, heck, for Robo and I, those are children. <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah. uh, Just keep it and, clean, Neil. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll be careful what I say. <laughs> but, uh, He's like, the art can't of innuendo. No, nah, I didn't get. Don't, don't get me wrong. I didn't get anywhere, but it's, um, yeah, it was good conversation. Very flirty from both sides. Put it that way. You just happened to let them know or hint that you had a hidden opal mine somewhere or gold mine. <laughs> <laughs> Whenever you needed money, you'd go to your secret place and go <laughs> spend a week, and that would be enough to last a year. I didn't even. I don't even think of that angle, actually. <laughs> <laughs> How many opal mines do you have in America near you, Bob? <laughs> no. No, they don't get opals in America, I don't think. Yeah, no, that's why I was asking. But. No, we have gold. I know, I work for the Owyhee Foundation. That's O-W-Y-H-E-E. -E. And it's in the Owyhee Mountains in Idaho. And they had a, uh, a town that had a very big historic background going back pre-statehood and uh, I just got addicted to helping out and doing work for them and spending time dressing in the period clothes and uh, 
it was fun being able to use my skills and the carpentry work and help the older buildings and work on them and <laughs> have to have a pot belly stove to cook on. There you go, done. Look at that. <laughs> look good or what? Huh? And what's going to keep it in there when you add centrifugal force to it? Oh, we won't. No. <laughs> No. No. I'll, I'll wait for him to, to melt it, then spin it and watch it splatter on his face. That'd be good. Oh, hey, come over here and help me then, and I'll splatter on your face. <laughs> I wouldn't do something like that. <laughs> Why not? No, that'd be, that would just You'd that rather would do hurt. Present, huh? You've been watching that. What's that guy who does all the shows? Um, Zen. Zen uh, oh, what's his name? He does crazy casting stuff. And turning, and he th See? does things like casting crayons or casting miles. Oh yes, yes. Nick Zimmerman. Uh, that, that's him. Yeah, Zimmerman. Zimmerman. Ah, oh man, I got a, I got a brain. Well, <laughs> I was thinking of him because he's uh, a distant relative uh, of the my best friend who we've been friends for a long time, and I, that's why I'm at his house living. Because we've done a lot of stuff in this world together. <laughs> hey. Yeah, when I lost my pension, he took me in. Yep. But I took him in when he was just out of high school and his older brother was Sorry. saying, I don't need him. Someone needs to to help him and I helped a friend out and it was very, very successful, very proud of him. Yeah, Nick does a lot of stuff that uh, he knows will fail, but what the hell? You know, like anything for the publicity. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I think it's not necessarily wrong because he wants to show people that you need to try. And if you see something not work, you actually learn a lot from it. At least I do. Or halfway through, you'll be suspicious. You know, I would rather that way. But if not, you sit back and people have come up and duplicated and made it work and uh, that's important oh. mm -hmm. melted in a rock actually yeah and his son has got the same attitude except now there's girls <laughs> for some reason that kind of changes a <laughs> guy's about 12 to 14. It hits, and then, boy, there's no living with him. I actually hit my 50% um, data yesterday, which is the most I've used for a long time, so I must be doing too many of these lives. Yeah, you must be. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it just well, reminds pay, me why I don't do them. You pay by the month or by volume? How much volume? Uh, yeah, I, I got a forty gig, gigabyte limit. Oh, I've got a thousand gig right. a month. I'd be lucky if I use bloody three hundred of it. Well, I got a forty gig limit, and I'm lucky if I use twenty. <laughs> well, that's you because you won't pop up with video and be yeah. part of the, <laughs> the group here. Uh, it's mainly because I'm normally travelling, and I only get reception when I'm travelling when I'm in the cities and that. So I rarely use that much data. What do you travel for? 
just for fun, I'm a, what they call a grey nomad here in, in Australia, where it's an old fart travelling around in a camper. Trying to pick up young things. <laughs> Trying to prove that you're just as active and young and productive today as you were when you were 15 or 16. Nah, 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 nah. I definitely don't. More do like tw <laughs> more like in your twenties. <laughs> hey, going, John. I know I'm old. <laughs> uh, you're as old as you feel, which is old. As <laughs> and Amber's nine years younger than me, so uh, if you're as you're old as you feel, robber. <laughs> That My makes you wife. a dirty young man, cradle robber. <laughs> My first I, wife was I nine years younger than me. My second wife was eight years younger than me. You've <laughs> outlived two wives? Boy, you nah. you must be some some gentleman that knows how to wear women out quick. <laughs> Never did that. <laughs> One wore me out. That's another story. That's something men never want to admit. Yeah. Until you get older and you realize it happens to everybody. <laughs> so what are you going to do now you've filled it, Jay? Are you going to turn it or? That's what I was looking at going, hmm, I haven't even quarter filled it yet. It's a bloody big crack. <laughs> oh, yeah. You've got surgeon scissors. Yeah. I like Amber, them. I've got two or three pair of different sizes, but I really like them. Amber used to do work for the doll at a place that um, collects up all of our old medical supplies and ships them off to Africa. Well, uh -huh. she had to. She had to count everything, and um, maybe maybe a, a box of scissors went missing. Oh. Oh, these <laughs> days, if you're after scissors and that, the, the hospitals, they're all disposable these days. So Yeah. I know at the local knife club, uh, they had a container that was sort of like the old 44-gallon drum, and it was absolutely full of them. Really good, high quality stainless steel. Yeah, yeah. Um, they were making um, knives out of them. Um, oh yeah. And uh, the first thing you got to do is scrape the plastic bits off them. Um, yeah. Uh, and I grabbed them and I said, "What's wrong with them?" And they said, "Absolutely nothing, but they're they're classed as disposable. It takes more effort and cost to." clean the other ones so they just dispose them and throw them out yeah but they'd autoclave them yeah well, I would, that's what they normally do but apparently the cost to do that was more than the cost of the scissors uh, so they just turf them out and I'm sitting there going well what's yeah. the cost it's just the electricity you've got the machine <laughs> yeah but I guess they've got to wash them first so uh, yeah, yeah, and they, you know, an ultrasonic wash. And... Yeah. But, yeah, so they, they get these drums every now and then from the hospital. The hospital just gives them to them. And yeah. They make really, really good knives. Yeah. Well, you know, the scissors are good, too, because I've, I've got some that I've actually sharpened a few times, and they can really be sharp. Just yeah. I take my uh, 800 grit diamond plate and I rub it flat never try to sharpen the edge sharpen the you know the yeah. the flat side of the blade and uh, or the back of the blade and boy they it does just enough to be able to cut you and it, they hold an edge yeah but one thing that you find and I didn't didn't get it initially when I started using and, and sharpening scissors like that my mother was a nurse so she'd get some and 
bring them home. Short handled, long handled, have a nice thirty degree bend on them. You know, on the end. Yep. Yep. Uh, hemostats the same way. But uh, they're hollow ground. You think the blade, I mean, the, the inside of the blade that, that where the two pieces go together, you know, and pass each other, uh, that's hollow ground. Oh. Every one of them I found out scissors and stuff's hollow ground. And I finally, after a couple of years of once in a while taking an 800 grit diamond card to them, just on the back side. Uh, and where the hollowness is gone, they get a suction to them with a liquid, and you have to really pull to get them apart. <laughs> so the hollow ground is because they can end up with fluids on them. It, it's a vacuum breaker by having them hollow ground a bit. It's like there's a little pocket in there, and it's it's interesting, but it does make sense. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I grabbed a, a basically an ice cream container full of the damn things, and you know I've got straight blades, long blades, curved blades, clamping tools, you name it. It's uh, mind you, they're still sitting there, never been used, but they're yeah. there for want them. <laughs> the magpie, I am. Well, I used to do a lot of ham radio and electronics as a kid, and my mother being a nurse, she'd get hemostats for me because I liked it. We have a company at that time called Heathkit where you'd get the instructions and you'd, it would start off step one, do this, step two, do this, step three. There's eight resistors, and here's where they go. Put them in. You know, to the tie points, but don't solder them yet because there's more to go on the tie points. And and I love doing that. I did that when I was, oh, 14, built the ham radio receiver. But I was doing electronic, electrical stuff well before that as a hobby. We had kits here from a guy called Dick Smith used to make kits and he could buy a book to show you how to put them together and what parts you needed for them and stuff. Yeah. I built a lot of them as a teenager. I built a computer, and it had 26 tubes in it. Didn't do much. You know, you could add in <laughs> binary, but it had 26 uh, tubes in it. That, that was something. Yep. And each tube was two bits. Which oh, was yeah. kind of nice. They were uh, duplicates inside. Yep. But all you did is turn the tube on and off, not the, the voltage, but allow a signal to go through and not go through. So yep. you created ones and zeros. Yep. Cool. Anyway, guys, I'm going to hit the road again. So you, uh, uh, I better go get dressed and bloody start doing something, I guess. All right, thanks for coming in. Yeah. Catch you later. Bye-bye. I don't know if this is going to work or not, but I'll give it a go. <laughs> For it, though. Seal the end off to keep it from dripping. Yeah. Super glued up. Uh huh. Is your spindle rusty? Or is that um, an illusion? Might be a little bit. Just right in, in the in between the grooves. In between the thread. Oh, okay. It's an illusion that looks like the nut on it's rusty. And no, it's got a tight bit of slight bit of rust to it. And... You have problems oh, with well, you don't have that uh, humidity problem, do you? No, I just haven't done anything with it. 
Oh. When I get bored, that's what I do. I it's like it's it's time to do maintenance. Time to make sure that the whole shop is vacuumed and stuff like that, and I'll go yeah. off and do that. And while I'm doing it, I'll invariably move something, uh, yeah. clean up my wood pile, and hey, I could do this with that. And then I'm off to my next project, and that's where the cleaning stops. <laughs> I thought you were going to clean one spot and then find another spot to clean and start cleaning that and forget about the other spot. <laughs> That's generally what happens with me. <laughs> oh, I've done that too. But if I find <laughs> something that, or a couple of things I'm working, you know, and hey, I could, why don't I do this with this? Yep. Yes. But I spend about seven hours a day out there. Yep. Between that and cleaning the yard, we got a graduation party Saturday, so oh, trying yeah. to get the concrete slab in front of the garage clean because I got wood piled up there. Yep. Get the whippersnappers in the gear. <laughs> Kids work. <laughs> it's summer. Well, it's either they want a party or they don't. <laughs> oh, being a high school graduation party, that's just, I mean, they're an adult now. They're 18. <laughs> yeah. hey, so was, they, it, was it legal at one point in your country to drink at 18, after 18? Uh, yes, but... It only lasted something like a year, yeah. And then the the they caught up with the change in the laws in some states. I just happened to be at the right place when that happened. Yeah. Except at that time, I had turned uh, twenty one, and <laughs> it didn't matter. Yeah, <laughs> it's like I had two days I could have drank. <laughs> yeah, prior to be twenty one. There's a TV show here that, that I really like to watch. They're doing reruns on it at the moment. It's called The 70s Show. Do you remember that? Yes. Yeah, well, they're doing reruns on that, right? And uh, one of them's turned to 18. And they, they were all pissed at him that, they, that he, they didn't know that he was 18 because they could go and get him liquor. And that, that kind yeah. of shocked me because I thought it was 21 and over, not 18 and over. No, tis where you're at. Canada yeah. was, I think, 18. But for a while it was here, and then it went to 21. Yeah. It used to be the states had their own uh, yeah. limits, too. Like when I lived in Alaska, it was interesting because there the father... And it has to be a legal father, not just you're living at that household. Yeah. You have to have parental, legal parental control. Uh, even if you're staying up there with a cousin, yep. they, they have to have legal notarized parental control. But then it's really interesting because the father, in the way the law reads, uh, you can't drink until you're 21, except if you're, you have it at home or if your father hands it to you. So you could be in a pizza joint and have a bunch of pizza in front of you. They get a pitcher of beer. Well, you can't, if you're 18, you can't pour it for anybody. But if your father pours it for you, you're given permission to drink it by your father and that's all right yep that's legal it doesn't matter if you're 18 or 12 or whatever the father is the head of the household yep. so you want to go home and get stoned and the old man in his house gives it to you physically then it's perfectly all right you get drunk and stoned at 14 13 but if yep. you get out and you do something that's serious you know driving <laughs> that's totally different than you got the consequences just as if it wasn't given to you 
Yes. That they think the father of the household is the head of the household, and that's this tradition up there in the, almost all the tribes. Yep. Or well, groups legalized, of people. Legalized who is 18 for drinking. But in America, you're allowed to get a license at 16. Yeah, driver's license. Yeah. We're allowed but to get you a... Can't, you we're can't we're drive a alone. You have to have yeah. a licensed driver with you at 16. We're allowed to get our learners uh, at 16 or 16 yeah. and a half. That's what it is here. But if it's for medical reasons, such as you have to drive a parent uh, or grandparent that you're helping with, you know, and live with to a hospital or to doctor's appointments, you can get it daytime only. And daytime is classified as the sun comes over the horizon and drops below it so it's a it's not a static time on the clock yep so you can get a daytime only license to be able to do that and in a lot of places here in the michigan you can get it to drive to school because if you're up in rural michigan they don't have buses everywhere and once you hit uh, grade uh, uh, well, here it's 10, it's 10, 11, and 12, because we only have 12 grades, where Canada has 13. Yeah, so do we. Yeah, yeah, we have 12. But they, and they don't count the first year kindergarten or preschool or that as grades. We don't either. But the trick is, is they have to find their own way to school. So it's find a buddy or a young lady or whatever to take you to school if there's no buses in your area, like where we are, yes. there's no buses, but it's under a mile and a half. So that's what they either walk or they get together and someone, you know, they chip in for gas and they use the old man's pickup truck or they work in the machine auto shop and get something going so they can drive. Yep. and pick up their friends and take them. Unless you're handicapped, then the handicapped bus comes to your door. Yep. Hey, Boston. <laughs> oh, well, Tim Tim is time for me. So... Okay. Thanks for coming in. All right. I'll catch you later. See you later, Thank Bob. You. See you, John. Yep. See you, Effie. See ya. Have you thought of how you're going to seal that afterwards? I was kind of hoping that I've melted the, the wax enough for it to soak into the wood a little bit on the sides. Uh-huh. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. doesn't matter. Well, then the other thing, if, depending on how tight the wax or resin is, resin will stick within the crevices where wax might melt into the crevices, but it's not that hard a wax, not crayon type wax. Yep. There are waxes that are really hard. I know I've got some where I've got to use a chisel to scrape some wax off the bar. Okay. Carnauba wax, pure Carnauba yep. wax is that hard. Yep. But boy, is it expensive. I bet it is. Goes a long way. But yeah. You got any? Um, I've got it 
I've got it in paste form. But I have got Okay. Some. Yeah, because it gives a nice finish. I get it in a bar, and I have a... It's known here as the Beal buffing system. There's... Yep. You know, and that's... It comes with the system. And I used one when they first come out. Got it. And then I won one as a door prize a few years ago, probably about 10 years ago. So I got a second set of wheels, which are nice. Uh, <laughs> and I'm just now moving over and using some of those. And I've loaned a set out during the, the COVID uh, to a friend of mine, a set of the three plus the waxes. Yep. That miss being able to have friends come over and, you know, just sit in BS and they want to. I, I have a ball. It's real big and I need the, you know, a big heavy motor yep. or a lathe like yours. Yes, sure. But yeah, no problem. <laughs> the rule's been simple. They've had to ne negative test and wear a mask, but everyone wears a mask anyway. In a way, yeah, for keep dust out. Yeah, we're we're uh, we're in stage five as of uh, midnight last night. It's spreading. Well, there's only three here, but that's enough for us. Oh. Well, you got a small community too, don't you? Yeah, well, compared to, compared thousand. to Sydney, compared to Sydney and Melbourne, yeah, definitely. Yeah, it's what it, one or two of the Olympians been testing negative, testing negative. They supposedly had the had their shots, but then they come down with it, and it's like the mother wouldn't allow it. Yep. But the problem is they caught it, but from who and when? Yeah, that's, that's right. the big thing is tracking it. And also, they, too, fester, they normally yeah. fester, colds and flus normally fester for 14 days before anything shows. So. Yeah. That doesn't help either. Well, I just really feel bad for an Olympic, an Olympian. They work all their lives for their 10 minutes, yep. you know, to be one of the best in the world. And they can't do it because... They got COVID. Yeah. Um, got held off last year for a reason. Most of them should have got held off for another year, but as we find out here, footy and and um and NRL they take control because their their sponsors want money. <laughs> yep, it's well, you know, what makes the world go around? Money. Uh, greed. It's not you. Well, they, they've got to make money to pay a people, and the people somehow it filters down to. So, find a different way of doing it. Yeah. Without, a, without diseasing people, <laughs> you know? Yeah, it's a hard, hard thing to make a decision on. We still have a lot of people that won't do it, won't take it because they've been told it's going to cause this, this, or this, or they're going to have miscarriages and. I've had some really None bad of reactions. which has ever had any reality to it. I've had some There's bad been questions. To it. A couple of people yeah. have died from the blood clots from here from having it. So it's put people, a lot of people on edge. Well, did they actually track it down to the vaccine or something yep. else? No, vaccine. Every time. So it's, it's put a lot of people on edge here, to be honest. Well, then the the one you're what one are you using? There's what four of them out or five? We've got two or three of them going at the moment. There's ones for young people and ones for elderly people and ones for middle aged people. Oh, and, they, and then and then they're changing the age bracket. You know, when they feel like it. And, uh. Well, it's due to testing. It's not feel like it because. 
they've had tests go on so they could see if you could take it at a younger age and a younger age here it's down to 14. it's not confidence building so <laughs> i'm not i'm not i don't want blood clots i've got i've got uh, a very low heart rate naturally as it is so i don't think a, a blood clot would, would do much good for me to be honest hey if the good lord wants you it doesn't matter what you say or do you're gone And that's the attitude I take at it. There's been so many times in the military uh, climbing. I, I used to love, I still would love to, but I've been a mountaineer. I have climbed some major peaks. Yep. Uh, you know, and I have traveled the, the world to do it. I spent about five years doing that. And I was a climbing paramedic, one of the first ever. Uh, in the in the states in north america that they had them in switzerland but we did at the time yep. so you could do advanced first aid hanging on the side of a rock face if need be yep. yep and i thought that would get me girls but eh, they weren't interested <laughs> and those that were typically and it's a cliche classification that i apologize for but those that did climb and get out there they were like tomboys yeah at least the definition that i grew up with meaning they would get out and do the same thing guys did and didn't let that stop them yep See that yeah, down there? Uh-huh. Really nice. I'm not a world-class climber, but I have climbed quite a few peaks around the world. Yep. I actually went to Everest, but I didn't have a permit to climb beyond base camp. It was a, uh, a group of about 40 of us that got sponsors to go and help clean up the mess, the trash pile that was left behind at base camp because yep. people just throw everything in a big pile and yes. for world cleanup day or something like that. But I had a, a group of people that, and it was before internet, <laughs> uh, followed some of the articles in that that I took pictures because I did a lot of photography climbing and got published a bit and uh, it it was a different time in my life it was like being a surfer bum you know and the girls that oh I, i'd like to do that and then want to come talk to you yep but you don't make money doing that but they expect you to buy them drinks and food <laughs> so you end up sleeping in a hammock at a friend's house between two trees at night because you can't afford a motel room and the floor is full in the room in his cabin and you all flipped and you ended up with the hammock been there done that <laughs> oh that was my 20s <laughs> mm. Mm. Sounds like the mother magpie got mad at her her, her babies. Well, that was a different magpie again. No. Oh. That was uh there's the the ones that make the nice sound, the nice tune, they're 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 our magpie. And then we've got others that are um uh uh, it's actually our state emblem, and they're uh, they're actually um, and they're noisy as hell. Squawker, squawker minor bird, I think they're called, uh -huh. just because 
Well, that's all they bloody well do. Like the like politicians. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Now, I held a city council spot when I lived in Alaska, only because the person that that was on the city council at the or we call it a city council, but it was a borough. They didn't yep. have counties; they had boroughs. Yep. And the whole state of Alaska isn't divided up in boroughs. They're just parts of land around cities that oh, are yeah. not governed by the city, but a lot of people live there, so they have their own government yeah. in essence we yeah. call them counties down here but they don't in the borough the person who was the representative for it was about 80 homes and about 45 50 square miles of yeah. land uh they uh they ended up because I opened my big mouth and said, I'll help any way I can. And <laughs> somehow I got voted into being the temporary for this the, because the person had had a heart attack and couldn't do it. And I was covering yep. uh, as a stand in. But unfortunately, he passed away and uh. I was it halfway into him getting well. And it was well. You can you stay until election time because we don't want to hold an emergency election because election time is only six months away, yep. or seven. So I said yes, but I got all sorts of weird phone calls in the middle of the night. There's a bear and he's prowling in my yard. Okay, <laughs> so. And he's a big bear. I turned the yard lights on, and he just stood up and stared at me in the window. So <laughs> he should be sleeping. It's about that time. And then you get this panic scream, and what do you want me to do? I can't, I'm not a bear tamer. Stay inside. <laughs> turn the light out. He's going to get tired. Did you leave any trash or anything outside? Well, I did take the garbage and put it outside so the it can be picked up in the morning. And I said, okay, so you put food out to feed them. It's your fault. Take a picture, <laughs> hang it on the wall, and say you won't do it again. <laughs> yeah. Lesson learned, huh? Maybe. Yeah. Well, the bears are really strong. I mean, they're. I only went bear hunting about three times in all the years I lived up there, and the best that I got was uh, twelve foot two inches. Yep. Standing up. Yep. And it did pretty good. I mean, it cost a pretty good amount of money. I just wanted to have a picture next to a bear that I shot. Typical Chichaco, as the Athabascans say, you mean outsider. <laughs> yep. Then I wanted it stuffed until I found out that would have been uh, like $2,500 to three grand. Oh. Wow. Uh, well, they have to specially cut the fur coat off and, you know, the skin and then dry it and handle it and lanolin in like mad so as it, it stays soft. Yep. Instead, I sold it. And it ended up being bought by the pub uh, in our little community and standing up and it was right by the door with the sign on it that I had. I was the one that shot it. But the Tourists loved it. They had to get their picture next to it. In the summer, they would put it outside in the tourist bus when it stopped. Everybody was standing there to take pictures in front of the bear I shot. <laughs> nice. I didn't good? get any of the money, but the pub owner did. 
<laughs> yeah, because he sold film and instant cameras and you know cheap camera packs along. And yep. <clears throat> they tourists always pay a different price. Yeah. Yes. You see the tour bus comes, you hand out the blue menus. <laughs> <laughs> And the other thing is the big cable spools that, you know, you see high tension lines and cables come on that are wood. And I mean, big ones, they had those for tables. Uh, because the, the tourists that were coming in during the pipeline were 90% Japanese because they actually paid, they made the pipe and they didn't charge anybody for it. They got in exchange for the pipe to make the pipeline. They got oil in return, so it was a good deal for them because they have no real, no source of natural oil. Yep. So they they made the pipe, they shipped it, and then they got a nice penny on the a nice price uh, back at, that it was better than wholesale. Yeah, because they were investor. Yeah, but it was interesting. They the big cable spools. He had them rigged so when they sat on the floor they were the table oh yeah and you could lift the tabletop off the side of the spool he had taken the bolts out that held it together and fastened it together without the bolts and all that so it wouldn't come apart reinforced it so when the tourist bus come by and he would always blow his horn a couple of times before he was pulling off the highway into the parking lot and everybody there, whether you were eating or whatever, you'd grab your plate, you whatever you had, <laughs> your beer mug, and you'd turn around and sit it on the floor or at the table next to you, and you'd lift the top off the table, yep. flip it over, and put it down. Because that was the side that you could carve names into and, and write oh, on yeah. and say John was here and with the date. Yep. And, they sold knives behind the bar so you could actually carve your name in it. And the Japanese would come in and, and the tourists, even the, some of them from Europe, they'd come in and, oh, I don't have a knife. I'd like to, well, yeah, you know. And, <laughs> yep. and then come the end of the season, the tourist season, he'd get out with a jack plane and plane them down again for next year. <laughs> <laughs> But they love doing it, I know, and everybody yeah. wore jeans, and we look like what they perceived the Alaskan outdoor men, miner and musher, would wear. Yep. So you didn't wear your fancy stuff on tour days. <laughs> you wear old pants with a hole in the knee, <laughs> big boots, flannel shirt, even if it's you know you don't need it because that's what they perceived in their mind. Uh, red, what red, the tourist red movies had a red yes. check jacket. Yes, you got it with the with the hat with the earmuffs. Oh yeah, because they they felt that, and this is a an Oriental custom. Uh, you're off. You're they're buying food from you, but if they're t- sitting down at the table where you are, because you could get eight people around a big cable spool, ten if they were friends or with kids and they would always buy you your meal so if you wanted the free lunch or free dinner you wait for the tour bus and there was not there were 12 tables so 12 people maybe if it's two to a table you can get 14 people get a free lunch (laughs) (laughs) but that's they feel that they can't take your picture yep uh because that's taking some of your soul and spirit from you oh yeah you know that's how they explained it to us so to do so they give you something in return so it buy a hamburger buy this buy that yeah you know you want hamburger big because hamburgers were not you don't see the japanese people eating hamburgers the young kids the young people do Big, big McDonald's type stuff. But these are, you see them make the patty and put it on the grill and cook it and toast the bun and make the, put the French fries in and they're hand cut so none of them are identical. 
they pick, you know, and they'd buy you a burger and fries because that's what most of them bought because it was unique to them. Yep. It's like you going to Tokyo and buying a Japanese food just to try it out. Yeah. Yep. And of course, we turned the tables over because we it, they were had people's names carved in them with hearts and dates and stuff like that. So the Japanese they had a big and it was a tradition. <laughs> and there were tabletops there that have, in reality had been there before, you know, a hundred years, two hundred years before, a yeah. uh, hundred years at least in in that for mining and you they were on display uh, the date that someone struck it and got then they write it in the table with a knife or an axe yeah. a little hatchet so it was really interesting the japanese would want to be part of that and put it in their table that's why we flipped them over to the carving side yep <laughs> and of course they didn't have knives so they had to buy knives <laughs> Jack knew all the tricks, but he'd been doing it for years. Yes. Good and people money. say, do you feel bad because you did that? No, because it was a fantasy that they were living out. Yep. They paid a fortune to come on that bus, let alone the airplane fare for, you know, of, to come there. Into yep. Alaska. Yep. Yes. If they wanted, you know, where their hotel is, they can go to an American restaurant and try the different foods. They always had buffets for them because they didn't quite, they weren't quite used to it. Unless they'd been to America on the foods. So a buffet, so you try a little sample first of whatever you wanted, and you can go back for more. So they'd start off with a little plate, yeah, and then put the sample pieces on, and sit down politely and taste them, and then they remember what they had, and then they'll get a big dinner plate. Yeah, but you can't go wrong eating the traditional cowboy or minor food like pork and beans and hamburgers and fries. And it's not like a McDonald's burger. The guy picks up the meat with his hand and makes a size patty that he thinks you're going to eat. Yep. Hey, go on, Mark. It's, it's as full as it's getting now. I run out of glue. <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's over three quarters full now. So. Yeah, I can understand about eating at McDonald's because of fish. They, I have only been to Japan twice, and that was a long, long time ago when I was in my 20s and 30s. That's where I learned to uh, get used to raw fish. The thing I like didn't like 
thing I had to get used to was the bowing. And the, the biggest insult is a nod of the head, which is I didn't have enough energy or you're not worth bending from the hip. The young people, they would do it and it was all right. But you hit an old person, like in their 50s and 60s, and that's a big insult. That's saying hello. Yeah. Here, so we don't have to pick our hands up. <laughs> yeah. But I got I got used to sushi. I lived with a family, and uh, I had the option of staying in a hotel uh, for what I was doing, and or I could stay uh, with a family, you know, in a house where they put you up and you eat with the family, and yep, they nice exchange student. Yeah, and I was with uh, they, their son uh, spoke English and spoke it real well at 14. Was a real math wizard because the Japanese, when they come out of school, beat everything we have coming out of our, our primary and secondary schools all to pieces. Like the Canadians beat us like mad in education. Yeah. Uh, because they take it very serious in in. Japan. Ah, Mitsubishi. What did you do for Mitsubishi? What division? Be the creator for their designs. The amount of creative things you come up with. <laughs> There's a link higher up. Why don't you pop in? No, nah, he won't. Good luck trying to convince him to come in. No, the art barks will let him. I stick your wife's about ready to have lunch, I would bet. Yeah, I can hear a tinker and a wine song. Well, it's only between centers, so I can take it out and give you a look, a bit of a closer look. Hey, that's not very nice. <laughs> nice one. Yeah. I hate these things. Yeah. Really that really look nice. I just hope you can keep it that way. Yeah. But if you can't, your little torch will make it all better. Yes. Just smooth it out. Yep. Microwave, Rudy. No, that was the oven timer. <laughs> I was Not was timer. It was uh, uh, it's telling me that uh, it's up to temperature. Yep. Kids got munchies, so he's throwing something in the oven. Put something in for me, too. Be a bit cold when I get there, but.
Em bóp Xuất sự đô I was just thinking something odd. What if you were to put a resin over that? Well, Doc, Pop, you're starting to scare me now. I was actually thinking the same thing. <laughs> well, the heat from the resin, red, uh, resin, the melter. resin, yeah. yeah, but it might cause some very interesting effects. Yeah, especially if it's cribbed like you have now. Yep. It would definitely encapsulate it. Yeah, I just need some resin now, don't I? You're out? Yeah, uh, the resin that I use, it's not. It's made by a fiberglass company, so it's uh, it, it's, it's okay. Uh, there's a company here that makes it for um, the television and film industry here, so uh, they're only like... um. A 40 minute drive for me. I'll go and see them next couple of weeks. They, they got to. Uh, what do they, what do they charge? Five, I'm not too sure, but they've got like four or five different types of resins. So I'll go and have a chat with them and tell them what I want to do with it and stuff. Well, you'd be good advertising. Yeah. Get yeah. a sponsor. There's a big margin in resin. Yeah. I know I got a friend of mine that does a lot of. Uh, resin work and for boats. Oh yeah, uh, fiberglass. You know where you lay the fiberglass and you cover it with resin, lay more fiberglass. Yeah. You know, matting and. Yeah, that's the company that makes this stuff. That's what they do. The resin that I would use normally. Yeah, that's what we in Michigan. We've got a big manufacturer up in the thumb of Michigan. It's neat that everybody has a map of Michigan. They carry two of them with them all the time. Yep. Because it's a hand, you know, a mitten. Yep. But it's up near the thumb. Yep. And uh, because they got a big harbor in there for boats and stuff. And boat building is a big business here. So they might make their own resin. And then lo and behold, now they sell it in big bottles for people to do their own boats and yeah, now they actually for years have been selling them in little bottles for the craft people, and they make a fortune. Yes, in the little bottles. If you yeah. buy it in the big bottle, you know the bigger you buy, the cheaper it is per ounce. Yes, just the volume of uh, in one goes a bit much sometimes. Well, it's more work to have a machine to buy a machine that'll put four to eight ounces in a bottle instead of the gallon jugs and the gallon is how they used to sell it for people you know two one gallon jugs yep. who wanted to make their own rowboat or kayak or something and you need to do that yep uh well i'm gonna knock it on the head now thank you very much for coming in everyone i do appreciate it and i really do like the blue in that it is nice that is nice i'll um I'll have a tinker over overnight and have a think about what I can do to stabilize it from it popping out. Um, even if I just get to the point where I just come out tomorrow and just turn it and see what happens. Because yeah, the, wood, the wood itself is still quite warm, so I would say it's still pretty, like, uh, still runny on the inside a bit. Ah. Uh-huh. I might leave it leave it for today and sit it in the bottom of the refrigerator oh, i've just got to put it outside today <laughs> oh yeah that's right one of those days <laughs> well we'll catch you tomorrow night take care okay i appreciate you coming in thank you very much yeah have a day tomorrow oh bye. Yeah. see effie mike three people in the background Thank